For most of these 30 challenges, we're studying ways to work from written briefs to make compelling artwork. Well, today we're going to flip the script. What can we learn by spending a day as the game designer? Welcome to episode 9 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Today's brief is to design a new object to fit an existing game. I'll use Mario Kart 8 for today's demonstration, and my goal is to add a new item into the existing collection of Mario items. Now, I'm not going to stop you from making a drawing if you want to, but know that this is primarily a written assignment. If I'm going to think of a new gadget to include in this lineup, first I have to understand what are the existing members sharing in common. And though I've played a lot of Mario Kart over the years, I've actually never played Mario Kart 8. So my first step is to do quite a bit of research. So after watching some videos, reading a wiki or two, and reading some fan reviews, I've pretty much caught up to speed. And if you're tempted to skip this step, know that it is really important. Because for the job of concept artist, it's important to be generally familiar with video games and movies, but it's totally impossible to play every game. In my game studio experience, other games were often used as a reference point on how a new feature that we were designing might function. A coworker might say, you know, it's like how those crates look in Apex Legends. Now, I might never have played that game, but it's really easy to find a video or an article and get to the gist of it. Point being, it's good to be knowledgeable, but expect to do plenty of research as well. And over the course of my research, I can generalize a few things about the items in Mario Kart 8. First off, every item is iconic to the Mario franchise. Mario games are all about tradition. So if I wanted to add, say, a nuclear warhead to this lineup. One major reason it wouldn't work is that the Mario franchise never featured a nuke. So whatever I come up with must, above all else, live in the Mario universe. Within the existing collection, there are attack items, there are items that speed you up, and there's items that slow and disorient the other racers. So when I'm considering a new item to add to this existing lineup, I'd first like it to fit into these existing categories, but I don't want it to overlap too closely with an existing item. The first thought I had was to use Cappy from Mario Odyssey. This circular toss right here just feels like it would work well. So how about a Cappy spin attack item? The problem here is that it's actually not all that functionally different from the Super Horn. Even though they look different at a surface level, really they're both just knocking players away in a circular radius around your car. So another idea I had was to give the player spiky armored shell. This would allow them to hold down a button and temporarily retract themselves into a spiky shell, and it would sort of defend them against incoming damage. Now there's a couple problems with this. First off, the artwork actually covers and hides the player, and this isn't something that most items in Mario Kart do. Normally they just hold them in their left hand. Also, a red spiky armor might be mistaken for this blue spiky shell. So even though I like some aspects of this idea, it's really probably better to move on. So going back to my research, and with an eye on these three categories I'd like to fit into, I finally decide on Flood from Mario Sunshine. This water gun backpack allows Mario to both fight enemies and to traverse the world. I feel like this hardware might make a good fit in the Mario Kart world. So the obvious option here is just to shoot a jet of water at racers in front of you but the game already has a number of weapons that disable and detonate other racers. So maybe what I do is I focus on how the water could disorient racers. And I find that looking to the real world is actually a really good opportunity. And in the real world, if you're on the freeway, puddles are very dangerous. Hydroplaning causes your car to kind of skate along the surface of a puddle. And when that happens, you can't steer your car. So I could imagine our weapon leaving puddles on the track and when another racer goes through one of those puddles, they can't steer their cart for a little while. So now it's time to think about details. In Mario Kart, there's traditionally two firing modes for various weapons. There's a forward fire and a reverse fire. Forward fire, I can picture. This would be fun where you create this big arcing blast of water, almost like a fire hose. And then where it lands on the track in front of you, it makes a puddle. And this could be extra fun because if you then don't steer at all and just go in a straight line, you'll end up hitting your own puddle. So that makes kind of a fun mixture of risk and reward. And then instead of firing backwards, I think this is where we bring in that aerial hover from Mario Sunshine. I can imagine the card leaping up into the air, suspending itself on this column of water. And in doing so, you could actually overtake a competitor 
and you would soak them in the process. I just think that would be a really fun mechanic. And so for the purposes of this homework, that'll do it. I'm going to reformat all this into a single page, and this is what I'd like you to do as well. But here you can see I started with research. I discovered what defined the existing set of items, and then I tried out a few different options until one fit all the criteria. The real success here wasn't dreaming up some wild, unprecedented item. Success meant fitting in cleanly with an existing collection. For your homework, I challenge you to pick a game you know and love and to add an item to an existing collection. It might be a vehicle, a piece of armor, or a weapon, or even a character. But focus on the research aspect, not the drawing. It'll be much easier for you to add an item if you've already thoroughly understood the pattern that you're trying to extrapolate. So have fun with it, and when you're done, I'll see you in the next exercise.